Hey you guys, what's up? It is Jack Beck filming another video for you guys. So, last week's video I said I was going to make a full video about body image issues. I don't think it's really talked about enough in the media on YouTube in general. So, I really wanted to sit down and tell you guys um, about... <laughs> My summer was rough. I'll be honest, um, I, it was kind of like a roller coaster of emotion. At the beginning of the summer, I was probably my lowest weight, my like the skinniest I'd been since college, and then I gained 15 pounds, and it, it was just like a whirlwind of, it was, it was weird, okay? And I kind of wanted to just sit down, tell you guys my whole issues and journey with body image, because if you're anything like me, I'm sure you guys follow tons of gay men on social media, and they all have abs, and big arms, and you know, perfect faces and stuff like that and it makes you feel bad about yourself I think body image is a huge issue in the gay community and I just want to tell you guys my story so if you guys are interested in hearing about it stick around because we're getting right into it guys okay you guys let's hop into a little time machine we're gonna start this video out by going back in time to you know middle school for Jack Meridue which that was not pretty at, that was bad, that was a bad rough, that was a rough patch. But anyway, middle school was around the time that I really started getting insecure about the way I looked. I was probably about 102 pounds. I didn't have armpit hair, didn't have facial hair, I still don't really have armpit hair. But I was just like a, a little gay boy, like very little, very gay. And eventually I went into high school. Surprise! My self-esteem didn't get any better. And you guys, I, I've i always had a very interesting relationship with food. When I was stressed, like the first thing that went was my appetite. I would feel nauseous. And um, I had a lot of stressors in high school. Um, yeah, what was my main stressor? Maybe uh, me being, you know, a big fat closeted homo. That was probably like my main stressor. But you know, I also had like tests that I was always stressed out about. You know, I did cross country and track. So track meets I was stressed out about but yeah I was stressed out about a lot of things and I wouldn't eat like I I would you know I always blamed being thin on my fast metabolism but truthfully it was that I was in like an immense calorie deficit I'd eat like a pop tart after going on a seven mile run for cross country practice and then I'd wonder why I had no fat no muscle. I had no I didn't even have a sex drive. So in high school I was probably around 105 maybe 106. I remember being asked if I had an eating disorder by my grandmother, by my doctor, by my friends. I honestly hated being thin. Like people thought that I I, I, I loved my size. I really, it was always a source of immense stress and insecurity for me. Fast forward to college, when I went to good old Ithaca College, I was still, you know, I was a, still a skinny legend. And again, I didn't eat. I didn't eat in college because I was stressed out. The food court also had horrible food. Sorry, Ithaca College, Sedexo or whatever the brand was that did the food. It was really bad. But that was around the time I started YouTube, okay? I don't know why I mustered enough confidence to start a YouTube channel, but I started YouTube and I remember my first ever for real shirtless videos with Matthew Lush. It was an underwear video. Here's a screenshot from it. You can see no muscle, no fat, no nothing. I'm not saying that was bad. I don't believe bodies are good or bad. It's just different. I was shocked though because I put out that video and something weird happened. Something that I never expected. I got positive feedback from people. The first time in my life People were commenting on my body in a positive way. Some people shat on my body, we know, but people were saying good things. People were saying I looked good. They liked how thin I was. It was handsome, and it was so bizarre to me that there was this community on the internet that was telling me everything I ever wanted to hear. You know, I always wanted to hear that, and no one in real life was telling me it, but people on the internet were. So I think that's why I really leapt into YouTube. It was an escape from reality in a very weird way. YouTube is like a double-edged sword. If you want to start a YouTube channel, it can bolster your self-esteem. It can tear it down. It can do both of those at the same time, but YouTube was, in a way, my escape from reality because it didn't matter that people in real life didn't really find me that attractive because what mattered was people on the internet. It didn't matter that in real life I didn't take my shirt off when I went to the beach because on camera my body looked good. I could control the lighting, I could control the angles. So I fell into this weird headspace where it didn't matter if my real life sucked. Um, if it looked good on camera and on YouTube, that's all that mattered. And that was such a shitty way to live like three years of my life. Eventually I got a boyfriend, um, my first ever boyfriend. I thought that that would make me feel really good about myself. This is something that the gay community doesn't talk about. There's jealousy in same-sex relationships. I felt like shit next to my boyfriend. I felt luckier. Beside him, I felt like a twig. So it made me feel not good about myself. So like I said, I kept up with YouTube because YouTube 
was the source of all, you know, the positive, the positive emotion. Everything that I needed self-esteem wise I was getting from YouTube. But then something interesting happened. Something unexpected happened. About two to three years into doing YouTube, I became numb to the positivity. And let me just say, any YouTuber that's starting out that says views don't matter, they're a liar, okay? Because attention is seriously a drug, and for a while, it really, like, it's it's a consuming, and it matters a lot. But like I said, about three years into doing YouTube, I became numb to it, and it wasn't fulfilling me the same way that it was anymore. And that's not a bad thing. I think that's a really, that's like a blessing, okay? Because it made me realize that I couldn't always escape into this internet, like, fantasy. I needed to actually pay attention to myself and my reality. So I started investing in myself. I started working out. It was maybe a year after I graduated college. I got up to like 120, 118. I felt good. That's when I moved to LA. And let me just say, LA's rough. LA's a tough city. But yeah, I moved out to LA. Hello, I've been living here for about two and a half years. But anyway, let's talk about now. Let's talk about the present. Um, why did my self-esteem tank this summer? I've been I've been feeling good about myself like for a while. I felt fine. I was putting myself out there. Obviously, I was shirtless all over YouTube. My body, like I was confident with myself. I was like 118, 120 pounds. I was fine with that. So at the very beginning of the summer, I was living my life. I got a call to be in a video about body positivity. Okay. Sounds great, right? Jack Meridu in a video about body positivity. I preach it all the time on YouTube. Turns out I needed to be like the unattractive guy in the video. Like I was the thin guy that is kind of bullied and made fun of, but I get the hot jock in the end. And on paper, it sounded great. But on set, when I was filming that video, I was like, wait a minute. And even before filming, I remember my friend was like, is that going to be good for your mental health, playing like the undesirable role in a video? And at the time, I was like, mental health? I don't know her. Who cares about mental health? Like, I always brush my mental health aside, and then I get fucked in the ass. I don't know. It sounds stupid, but... When you're cast for a specific role, that's kind of how the world sees you. And it was just a little odd for me to play the role of, you know, the thin guy that's bullied. But, you know, if I'm lucky enough and if I'm kind enough, maybe, just maybe I'll get the hot jock in the end. It really did fuck with my self-esteem, okay? And the week leading up to filming that, I'd been seeing a guy who was kind of suddenly distant all of a sudden. I didn't know why. And like I said, when I'm stressed out... I'm not eating. I'm not going to the gym. On shoot day for that video, I was 113 pounds. For anyone who's seen the video, literally you see me get on a scale, 113 pounds. I had not been that light, that thin, like I said, maybe since the end of high school. And it kind of shocked me. I was like, shit, what the fuck am I doing? So I filmed that whole entire video and I was like, you know what? I'm in a little, I feel like I'm in a bit of a funk. It'll pass, it'll be fine. The day, <laughs> that the day that I shot that video, that night, the guy dumped me, the guy I'd been seeing dumped me. And let me just say, I don't wanna talk about it, I don't need to get into it anymore. The past is in the past, I'm letting it go. I've talked about it enough on this channel, but when you are rejected, when you are dumped, you question everything about yourself, your looks, your personality, everything about yourself you doubt, okay? So, I had just felt like shit on set, and then I got dumped, and it was just this weird triggering, like, spiral. And that very night, I remember I got off the phone with a guy after being dumped, and I sat there, and I was like, this is the shittiest I've felt in a long time. I'm never feeling this way again. So I actually took the time to do some research. I started working out. I started eating right. And I went from 113 to 129. I gained 16 pounds. That's insane to me. I even feel fatter. Like, I feel fat on my body, but I feel better about the way I look. I feel like I am more confident. So now that I've had this whole spiel and told you guys all about this story, I want there to be three positive takeaways that you guys take away from this video, okay? And I'm gonna get into that in one second, but this is genuine, no bullshit advice. I'm not gonna spoon feed you guys what you wanna hear. This is my genuine advice. Three takeaways, the first being this. You deserve to be happy, okay? The goal is happiness. The goal cannot be thinness. The goal cannot be gaining more muscles, okay? The goal for you needs to be, I wanna be the happiest I can be. Next, and this may be the wisest thing I ever tell you guys, okay? 
I think one of the greatest skills that you can possess in life is the ability to be happy with what you currently have, okay? Some people never learn this. I mean, you hear the stories all the time. People are in very happy, healthy relationships, beautiful relationships, and then they cheat. And you wonder why, but it's because they could never learn to be happy with what they had. They always needed something more. And I think we're always taught, shoot for the stars, you know, dream big. And while that is so important, and I think we should always strive, you know, to be our happy happiest selves and live our happiest lives. What is equally as important is learning to be okay and grateful with what you already have. Your body right now, it's enough. It is enough. Maybe it has weaknesses, but it also has strengths. You may want to be as thin as me. Guess what? I have fucking rosacea. I probably want your skin. You probably have clear skin. Your skin isn't flush. This is why I wear makeup. I don't wear makeup because I love it. I don't wear makeup because, oh, it, I artistically express myself through makeup. No, it's because I always look sunburned and I hate it. And I envy people who have great skin. So maybe you have great skin and I don't. Your body has strengths. Maybe you have beautiful eyes, beautiful lips, great hair. Maybe you're kind. Maybe your voice is sexy. Your body has strengths right now and celebrate them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, last but not least. Boys will come. Boys will go. Jobs will come. Jobs will go. Okay, the only thing that you are positively stuck with until the moment that you are dead in a casket is your body, your heart, your mind, okay? So if you don't love that, you don't love your body, you don't love your thoughts, you don't love who you are, you're fucked, okay? A relationship and a boy shouldn't be what makes you feel beautiful. A job shouldn't be what makes you feel successful, nor should money be. Strangers on the internet shouldn't be what make you feel like you matter, nor should follower counts, view counts, any of that. You need to be in control. You should be able to love yourself with nothing else, okay? And if you don't, you need to change something. And change isn't always bad. Change is sometimes liberating. Change is sometimes what you need to move forward in life, because you matter too. You know, and you deserve to be happy too. You can't keep giving yourself to everyone else in the world and then give nothing back to yourself. So I just want to see you guys all be happy. That's all that I want to see. So yeah, that was my story about body image and my struggles with it. Um, yeah, that's my journey, my advice. I hope some of this advice can help. Like, I hate saying that. can help somebody out there because that sounds so stupid and melodramatic. But I don't know. I hope it can inspire you to try to better yourself or to be happy with what you currently have and who you currently are. But yeah, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts, comment below. And yeah, follow me on Twitter, officialjackm. Instagram is jmeridu. And if you want another video by me, I will link below last week's video. It was a Q&A. We go skinny dipping. It was another house party q and I answer a bunch of questions bunch of questions about, um, <laughs> well, uh, well, well, I don't even remember. Oh, no, that fucked me up, that stumble. But, um, yeah, I answer questions about boys, breakups, tons of shit, religion, God, ghosts, so yeah, that'll be linked below. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.